All right. Hello, hello. Good evening to all of our students and counselors and parents who are entering into this evening's webinar for the Texas Association of College Admission Counseling, uh, powered by StriveScan Virtual College Fair. Uh, students, just a couple of reminders before we hand it off to our college representatives. Um, if at any point during the presentation you have a question for our college, um, go ahead and use that Q&A button down below and someone will respond back to you. Um, they can be specific to one university or also general questions and it doesn't have to be asked while that person is presenting. You can ask throughout the session. Also, your camera and microphone are off students, um, so our panelists can't see or hear you. Also, there are about, I believe, two more hours of sessions this evening happening for uh, TACAC. So if you're interested in hearing from more universities, go ahead and check out that schedule for more this evening. And this is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Texas, usually in a few days. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it off to our representative from Rice University. Hello everyone, I'm just gonna go ahead and share my screen. I think you should be able to see that. All right, perfect. Um, thanks. Um, so my name is Nelson Mendoza. I'm an admission officer at Rice University. I primarily recruit from uh, Houston and East Texas. So if any of you are from that area, I'm your admission rep. And I'm gonna be sharing just a few pieces about Rice, including academic, student life, um, a little bit about our financial aid. Um, and then I look forward to any of your questions um, as they um, shared in the Q&A. So I'll jump right in. Um, at, so at Rice, we are divided into several schools of study, including our School of Architecture, our School of Engineering, and our School of Humanities. When you apply to Rice, you're going to name the School of Study and up to three majors that most interest you. Though you are not bound to that School of Study and those majors that you list on your application, Although we do um, like to see students show passion for that school of study and that major in their application. When you um, apply to Rice, again, you're gonna tell us on the application what you're most interested in. And then there will be a supplemental section of the application where you'll kind of elaborate um, on those interests. We also like to give students a lot of flexibility to explore their academic interests. And so every student has to complete flexible distribution requirements. Under the flexible distribution requirements, you must complete three classes in the humanities, three classes in the social sciences, and three classes in either engineering or natural sciences. Many students will take advantage of these to explore before they choose their major at the end of their sophomore year. Research is an important aspect of the Rice experience. Um, around 68% of Rice students will conduct research. Many of them begin uh, conducting research from their freshman year here. We offer over 45 research centers and institutes at Rice and everything from the biosciences to engineering design to public health, um, philosophy. Um, and so you can um, get involved with research pretty much on every topic <laughs> you can think of. Um, also, we are home to many world-renowned professors for the research and achievements um, that our professors have done. Uh, many of them have won the Nobel Prize, Guggenheim Fellowships, Grammy Awards, Pulitzer Prizes, you name it. Although what I like to stress about Rice is that we are a small school. We have a student to faculty ratio of just six to one. So for every six students, one professor. And so because we are such a small school, you will have a lot of access to these professors. These professors will be involved in student life. These professors can mentor you. So not only are they very distinguished and have won a lot of prizes, but they will be a big part of your Rice experience. So I've talked about academics. Let's now chat about student life. Rice is ranked the number one college in the country for best quality of life by the Princeton Review. And a big part of our student experience is the residential college system. The residential colleges are essentially dorms, though most Rice students will live and eat all four years in that same residential college. The summer before your freshman year, 
you will get a letter in the mail telling you which residential college you've been assigned to. It's kind of similar to Harry Potter where they get assigned to one of the Hogwarts houses, except we don't have a talking hat here, unfortunately. And every college has its own tradition, its own t-shirts, its own colors. You can see pictured here, hands in college and their t-shirts and their colors. Um, within your residential colleges, you'll have your own student government. They have their own budget. Um, they even have their own magisters. The magisters are Rice professors who will move into a house next to your residential college. The magisters move into that house with their family, with their babies, with their pets. Um, and so don't be surprised if you see your magister walking their dog <laughs> in the courtyard um, on the way to class. And so the magisters are there to provide um, a lot of support, uh, but also to create a sense of community. If you'd like to get involved in clubs, Rice offers a lot of clubs, over 280 clubs, everything from academics to volunteering to cultural to political clubs. If you don't find a club that suits you, Rice gives you money to start your own club. Um, also, we are home to um, 14 NCAA Division I sports teams. So if you're interested in playing at uh, Division I level, uh, we do have a wide range of sports represented. Um, our teams compete in Conference USA and our teams um, have done quite well um, in the last few years in our conference. Support at Rice takes a lot of shapes. You might get support from professors, from Rice staff, from alumni, um, and even from other Rice students. Um, there is a program at Rice called the Peer Academic Advisors. The Peer Academic Advisors are usually older students in your residential college, and they are there to provide support, tutoring, mentorship. If you are nervous about your organic chemistry exam, you may um, ask your peer academic advisors for help, um, and so they are there providing support. Our Office of Multicultural Affairs helps make Rice be a safe um, and welcoming environment for everyone. They host events, they hold educational programming, trainings, diversity workshops. They bring a lot of prominent speakers to campus. So they're another office um, of support. Um, the last one I'll talk about is the Student Success Initiatives Office. Uh, we call it SSI. Uh, SSI is a, um, they give support to students from all walks of life, um, but they give a lot of support to our first generation and um, low income students. Um, and so they offer appointments, they're right in the middle of campus um, and they, you can knock on their door um, and have an appointment with SSI. Uh, we are in the city of Houston at Rice. Um, it's a big part of our Rice experience. So we like to promote Houston. Um, Rice is just a few minutes from downtown Houston. Houston has hundreds of uh, Fortune um, 100 company, uh, uh, Fortune 1000 companies. Many students will take advantage of that to get internships. There are also a lot of sports games and cultural events in Houston. Students will often get free or reduced tickets to those events, like the Houston Rodeo, you'll usually get that for free. Um, like Astros games, you'll get that for cheap or for free. Thanks um, so much, Nelson. We're gonna have to move on to the next presenter. All right. Thank you. Thanks so much. You can share your contact info in the chat as well. Um, mm -hmm. We are going to move on now to Washita Baptist University. Hello everyone, my name is Dylan Thomas and I am the admissions counselor for Washita Baptist University. Um, I have the Dallas-Fort Worth uh, territory. Um, so if you're from that area, I'll be working with you. And um, Washita is a small private Christian university located in Arkadelphia, Arkansas. It is um, about 15 minutes away from Lake DeGray nestled in the foothills of the Washita National Forest. So it's a very beautiful campus. Um, and uh, we have about 1500 undergraduate students in our nationally ranked uh, Christian liberal arts university. Um, Washita was started in 1886. And so our relationships run as deep as our 134 year history with meaningful traditions and a strong spiritual foundation supporting it all. Um, our mission is to uh, foster a love of learning and a love of God in our students. And so you'll see that throughout the whole university um, and everything you do. So because of our commitment to excellent education, graduate placement, general financial aid, and minimizing of student de debt, Washington last year was ranked as the best value college in Arkansas by niche.com. 
And Washington is also ranked as the um, nation's top colleges by US News, World, News and World Report and Forbes and has the highest student satisfaction rate in Arkansas, Texas and Louisiana, according to college consensus. So our students absolutely love being on campus here at Washita. Um, we are a residential campus, which means 95% uh, of our students live on campus. And so uh, Washita encourages students to do life together through intramural sports, uh, more than 50 campus clubs and organizations and our annual song and dance competition called Tiger Tunes. Um, students have the opportunity to participate in national and international mission trips, study abroad and honor societies. And so there's always things going on um, around campus during um, during the year. Um, additionally, uh, Tigers compete both on and off the field at Washita. Nearly a quarter of our student body participates on one of our 15 NCAA Division II athletic teams. And currently our football team reigns as the 11-0 undefeated Great American Conference champions. Um, so fantastic sports programs here at Washita. Not only that, we have more than 60 academic programs in seven academic schools from nursing to history, communication sciences and disorders to sports media. Um, so our undergraduate programs are going to prepare you for success. Our low 13 to one student to faculty ratio means personal connections with professors and no impersonal lecture halls. It's gonna feel more like a high school setting. Um, our average class size is about 18 students. And if you aren't sure what you want to study, that's totally okay, there's no pressure. Our unique Discover program helps each student find the right major for them. Um, an education at Washita prepares students to launch, launch into meaningful careers or succeed in grad school. I mean, you are gonna have opportunities to um, experience high impact learning through your time at Washita through hands-on experiences, labs, field works, and internships as well. Um, the personal and hands-on approach to learning con con uh, contributes to our 99% placement rate um, in graduate school or in the workforce. Um, additionally, with more than 99% of Washita students receiving financial aid and only around 50% of our students taking out loans compared to about 69% nationally, we're committed to making Washita an affordable education. And one of the ways that we do that is through every incoming student receiving a scholarship at Washita. Um, and <clears throat> that is um, right now based upon GPA for the fall of 22, we're still trying to figure out if we're going to um, go back to taking the um, ACT or SAT test scores. Um, so stay tuned on that. But the application for juniors will open up on June 1st. So just in a couple months and you can go ahead and send in your um, your transcript and go ahead and be accepted for that. The application is free. There's no essay. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes to fill out. Um, and then a big deadline for us is December 1st. This is our priority scholarship deadline. We don't have a specific deadline that you have to be in to receive a scholarship. You can certainly receive a scholarship after December 1st, but if you're wanting your total or your best financial aid package, um, having um, an acceptance and your FAFSA submitted to us by December 1st will get you the, the best financial aid package. <clears throat> we are um, currently open for visits Monday through Saturday between eight and five. And then um, we'd love to have you on campus and just connect with you um, throughout your college search process. So if y'all have any questions, I'm gonna drop my um, contact info in the chat and then I would love to reach out to y'all and answer any questions. Thanks for your time. Excellent. We will move on now to Mississippi College. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to share my screen with y'all. Well, hello, my name is Arlie Seymour, and I'm the Dallas Fort Worth Regional Admissions Counselor for Mississippi College. I'm excited to be here tonight and tell you more about the school and the place that I was able to call home. So where is Mississippi College? We are in central Mississippi. We're located in a suburb called Clinton, Mississippi, which is about a population of 30,000 people right outside of the Jackson metro area, about 15 to 20 minutes, depending on where you're going. So during my time at Mississippi College, something that I loved was 
where Mrs. where we're located in terms of other big surrounding cities in the southeast that you may or may not been to before. So pre COVID times, it was very normal for students to um, go to Memphis for the weekend or go to New Orleans for the weekend, um, maybe go to Nashville for a concert or Atlanta for a concert. Um, we're about six hours from Dallas, seven hours from Houston. Um, not gonna lie, if you're going to Dallas to and from, it's the easiest drive. You get on I-20, you go straight for about six hours. Um, so this was something that I find that is attractive to students. Um, looking at schools who are from Texas, being that MC is so close to these other surrounding cities, you have um, the vast opportunity to travel. At MC, we are a Christian university. Um, our mission is to be known for academic excellence and the commitment to the cause of Christ. And I believe that this is evident throughout every aspect of our campus. Um, I believe that we love God and because we love God, we love people really well. And we want everyone to have a seat at the table, no matter who you are, no matter where you come from, no matter what you believe. Um, this is something that I love about Mississippi College, and I believe you can see throughout our campus. At MC, we have an enrollment of about 5,000 students. This is going to be undergrad and graduate. However, specifically for undergrad, you're going to have a little over 3,000 students, um, 3,200 for undergrad. Um, something I loved about MC was that throughout my time there as a student, it was small enough to where I could see people I know every day, but it was big enough to where I can meet someone new every day. Um, I'm from small town Mississippi, so uh, the big SEC school vibe um, intimidated me. But when I came to tour MC, um, you could very much see the tangible community that was present on campus. And part of that is due to the smaller enrollment size at Mississippi College. Um, at right now, we actually have 60% of our students come from out of state and 40% are in state at Mississippi. With our smaller enrollment rates at Mississippi College, we have a 16 to one student to teacher ratio. Um, multiple other presenters have talked about this tonight. Um, and I agree that this smaller student to teacher ratio really is much more beneficial than you anticipate it being. Um, with the smaller class sizes, you're not just gonna be a number. Um, you're not just gonna be a name on the roll sheet that they cross off, but at Mississippi College, whether you like it or not, your professors will know your name inside and outside of the classroom. Not only is this gonna be beneficial during your time in undergrad, right? If you need extra help, um, but eventually when you graduate and you need a job and a le letter of recommendation, um, this was much more beneficial than I could have ever anticipated it being during my time at Mississippi College. So at MC, we have uh, 85 areas of study. Our big three are gonna be bio pre-med, business and education. Um, our bio pre-med program at Mississippi College is one of the strongest in the state of Mississippi. We actually have a wet cadaver lab that is open to undergraduate study on campus. Um, we are one of the only undergraduate institutions, if not the only one that has this feature open to students during their undergrad study. Typically that's something they don't have access to until medical school. Our students also have two times the national average acceptance into medical school as well. Um, the second one I said is gonna be our School of Business. Our School of Business actually has the same AACSB accreditation as Harvard School of Business. And last but not least, it's gonna be education where 100% of our education majors pass the praxis too. So this is a little bit of an overview of the things we talked about tonight, plus some extras. Um, we also have over 70 on-campus organizations, whether it's serving, whether it's performing, some of those are scholarships, some of them are not. Um, engaging groups on campus, intramurals, um, as well as our social organizations. Um, we do not have nationally known Greek life at Mississippi College, but we have our own version called Clubs and Tribes, where about 30% of our undergraduate students are involved in clubs and tribes on campus. Um, our application is currently free. If you are a junior, that is going to open um, June 1st as well. Um, we are still having in-person visits and tours and preview days, which is really exciting. We actually give a $500 scholarship to any student that comes to visit our campus. So we have in-person preview day coming up on March 27th and junior day, specifically cultivated for juniors. That's going to be on April 9th. 
If you can't make those days, no worries. You can go to mc.edu slash visit and schedule your, your own campus visit um, where you will be able to still receive that $500 scholarship. Like I said, my name is Arlie Seymour. I appreciate y'all's time tonight and I hope you have a great night. Thank you so much. We will now move on to our representative from Hendricks College. Awesome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am so glad that you are here. I'm excited that you're coming to hear all of the different schools. And one of the things that with Hendricks College, the key is unto the whole person. So let's get started. Are you in? And here's what, what Hendricks wants you to think about. Are you excited about being engaged and having conversations with professors? Are you excited about discovering new ideas and having programs and opportunities that will change the world, change your community, it'll change you? Then I want you to look at Hendricks and I want you to think of two things. I want you to think of community and I want you to think of home. And when I say that, when we think about unto the whole person, in our process, what we're thinking about is who are you? What's your brand? What's your values? What's your desires? What's your promise? And we want to get to know you. And once we get to know you, what we want to do is engage you and engage learning. And what does that mean? It gives you an opportunity. One of our top programs, the Odyssey program, Every student has an opportunity, a minimum of three projects, programs, ideas, and, and within six categories, artistic creativity, global awareness, professional and leadership development, service to the world, undergraduate research, and special projects. I asked you, is there anything that you would desire to impact, to change the world, to be involved in? That's engaged learning in our Murphy program and also in the Miller Center, you have an opportunity outside of the classroom to explore and to develop and to learn. And so I want you to think, am I an engaged citizen? And one of the things with Hendrix that I get excited about, it's a small community. Remember I said that word community? Well, that means that you have an opportunity to work with professors, work with other students and bring your ideas to life. We're about five hours from Dallas, so you can get there pretty quick. We are a pretty diverse campus, but more what's important to me is that I wanna to get to know you. And as I get to know you, be able to guide you through our admissions process. What are we looking for? We're looking for your essay and your application and your transcript. Once we do that, and I want you to remember this, in the essay, it's about you. 
Remember I said, unto the whole person, Hendrix is wanting to know who you are and then help you develop and expand on your ideas and your thoughts. I'd love to talk with you. I'd love to get to know you and have a conversation and also talk about, well, how can you afford a private education? Most educations are expensive and how can I pay for it? So Hendrix hears you and we've created the tuition advantage, but I'll talk to you about that program on a one-on-one, -on -one. but here's what I want you to remember unto the whole person and community and who are you? What's your brand? Reach out to me. My contact information is here. I'll drop it in the chat as well. And thank you for coming. And we look forward to connecting with you and getting to know who you are. Thank you so much. We will move on to our next presenter now from Elon University. Hello, everyone. Uh, great to see you. My name is Ashley Rose. I'm with Elon University in North Carolina. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we can get started. So I'm just going to take you really quickly through just a quick overview of what Elon looks like, um, a little bit about who we are, where we are, um, and that sort of thing. Um, so Hopefully, there we go. All right. So first of all, as you can see from this little kind of makeshift map that we have here, Elon is located kind of smack dab in the middle of North Carolina, which is honestly fantastic because we're in between these major metropolitan areas of Raleigh, Greensboro, and Charlotte, which is awesome. Lots of internships, lots of airports, right? Got to make sure you're getting to and from home. Uh, I am from Kingston, Jamaica. If you couldn't tell, I actually went to Elon myself, so I'm very familiar with these airports. <laughs> if you need any advice as to how to come and visit Visit us, which we are hosting on campus visits. Uh, feel free to let me know. Uh, a little bit about who we are. We have about 6,000 undergraduate students, medium sized school, not too big, not too small, kind of right in the middle there, which I think is kind of great. Um, out of those 6,000, um, 80% of our students are out of state. So you certainly would not be alone in not being from North Carolina, that is for sure. Um, right now, we have about 47 states represented, um, and then uh, about 20% of our last incoming first year class identifies as racially and ethnically diverse. We aim to be a really welcoming and inclusive campus environment, and you can really feel that and see that in all our different resources, um, and of course, just the atmosphere that we provide at Elon. Um, a little bit about kind of what we look like numbers wise. We have four undergraduate schools um, and over 60 different majors and minors, which is great. Lots, a huge variety for liberal arts and sciences. So everything from engineering. I know somebody asked a question about biomedical engineering and, you know, to dance and musical theater and things like that as well. So uh, the cool thing about the four undergraduate schools is that you actually don't have to apply into one specific school. So once you're into Elon, you're into all those different undergraduate schools. Uh, so if you want to be a business major one day, a communications major the next, sounds great. Um, the only exception, of course, is if you have um, an audition component to your application. So for example, if you do want to study musical theater um, or things like that. So a little bit about kind of a program that is really, I think, unique to us. While so many of these wonderful schools have all these things like internships and research, um, at Elon, you actually have to do two of them just in order to graduate. So you are guaranteed to leave Elon with something to show for yourself on your resume because you've had to do at least two things out in the real world, which I think is fantastic. You can do any two you want. The average number is three. Um, study abroad is really huge for us. We're actually ranked number one in study abroad in the whole United States. Um, it's very popular. I think about 84% <laughs> completes at least one study abroad experience. Um, but yes, please feel free to look on our website and see all the different destinations that we visit. A little bit more about our community and what your life at Elon could look like. Um, we have over 284 clubs and organizations um, on our campus, including a mac and cheese club and something. I think there's one called Taco or something like that. Yep. Um, but lots of different things to get involved with. Of course, we have 17 varsity sports. They're all Division One, and lots and lots of different places to eat on campus, including um, some incredible, incredible dining halls. I think the last time I went to the dining hall um, was a couple months ago, and they had sushi, which kind of favorite food. So um, a little bit about outcomes and kind of what life looks like after Elon, because of course, we're going to college so that we can graduate and be successful out in the real world. Um, and essentially, about 95% of Elon graduates within months of graduating are either employed, enrolled in graduate school or working with a nonprofit organization, which is 
92% of that 95 are doing something actually related to what they studied at Elon, which is also tremendous because you want to make sure that you're not just getting your degree or you're not just having an internship, you're having relevant experience that's going to prepare you um, for out in the real world. Okay, but a little bit about the nitty gritty, kind of what it takes to attend Elon. We actually rank a best value university. So essentially what that means is bang for your buck. So amongst schools that offer similar things to what we do, we are usually one of the cheapest. And of course, lots of ways to help you with that. So of course, there's the FAFSA um, families. That's where you're filling out the FAFSA, CSS profile, things like that. And of course, we have some scholarships and different so some you actually don't have to apply for at all, some you do, um, and some of them actually combine applying for your undergraduate degree and your graduate degree, and you're able to complete those two in a shorter amount of time, which is awesome. So lots of different things to look into. Of course, all this information is going to be on our website. Um, and just some important details um, to just pay attention to as you are considering applying to Elon and things that we're looking at as we're uh, reviewing your application. Uh, we are test optional, which is awesome. So that's super exciting. Um, and then also demonstrated interest is something that we do take into account. So if you're interested in Elon, I'll drop my information in the chat. Please feel free to copy that. And then uh, you let me know if you have any questions at all. Um, that essay, as the person that reads them, I certainly appreciate when you make them good. Um, and of course, just to kind of give you an uh, idea of what we look like at um, and then just some de dates and deadlines. Of course, you can find these on the website too. Um, of course, November is something that you want to pay attention to um, in terms of any early applications and then January um, for scholarships and the regular deadline. And here's just my contact information. Again, I'm going to put it in the chat. Again, my name is Ashley and I'm your admissions counselor. Uh, so please feel free to go ahead and demonstrate that interest or ask me any questions that you may have uh, using my email address. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. On to our next presenter from Baylor University. Hi, everybody. My name is Rachel Garcia, and I am the Baylor admissions counselor. I'm going to share my screen here. Oh, sneak peek. Um, so I represent, I'm a representative from Baylor. I actually have the coastal Bend area, the Gulf Coast, as well as the San Antonio area and some parts of Dallas as well right now currently. Um, but yeah, so if you don't know about Baylor, we are located in Waco, Texas, which is right in the central Texas area. We're about 90 miles south of the Dallas-Fort Worth area and 90 miles north of the Austin area, just to give you an idea of where we're at. What we specialize in is academic excellence. We have over 140 plus majors and programs for students to choose from. Our, I would say our top majors are, and programs are gonna be our pre-med program, which pre-med is a track. So pre-med can be added on to almost any major at Baylor. Uh, our pre-med program is phenomenal and our students are getting into, into medical school at twice the national average. So about 74, 75%, which is amazing. And then we also have our business school, which we have about 18 different majors within our business school and then our engineering program as well. So those are our top majors, but we have so many across the board from communication sciences and disorders, art history, as well as um, different honors programs as well and ways to enhance the year time at Baylor through our honors program. Um, so, so many to choose from. Uh, top tier research, we are a um, R1 tier one research university. So lots of opportunities for students to go into research. I always tell students that if they're interested in research to get connected with faculty that is conducting research. We have so many faculty members conducting research right now from neurosciences and sleep studies to psychology working along our VA office, um, just so many op options for research for students. Our average class size is about 26 and we have a 14 to one student to faculty ratio. So very similar to a lot of the other colleges you've heard from today. Um, just that personal experience to really get to work with our intentional faculty. I always encourage it. I myself am a graduate of Baylor back in 2017 in the business school. And I just remember that I had just amazing faculty members who wanted to get to know me. I actually had a faculty member that got me my internship during the summer before my senior year, which then ended up getting me a job. So, you know, it's always encouraged to meet and get to know different faculty members. And Baylor is about 14,000 students undergrad, which is a really good mid-sized university, not too big, not too small. And I like to say that we have all the opportunities of a large state school and just have that small school, small college feel. 
um, our community. If you ask a student what their favorite part of Baylor is, nine times out of 10, they're going to say the community. That one student's probably going to say the food. It's just really good. Um, but we do thrive in our community, and there's so many ways for students to get involved. There's something for everyone at Baylor. We are a Baptist university, and so we are an unapologetically Christian university. And what that details is that we do request that students um, take two semesters of chapel, which is Monday, Wednesday. They are not a service. Um, they are more of um, just a time to relax and really enjoy different testimonies from people and different um, uh, like bands and things like that during our worship services. And then we also require Christian scriptures and Christian heritage. However, we have students from so many different places um, who have just different um, religious backgrounds and different faiths. Um, and then within our, you know, our diversity, we have over 34% of our students are coming from um, a diverse background or um, are, are of a, like a person of color. So we do own a diversity with different organizations. We have a first in line program for students who may be um, first, uh, first year um, you know, first people going into college. And we also have lots of different programs, over 330 plus student organizations everywhere from multicultural organizations. We do have um, Greek life and we also have the National Panhellenic. So we actually have seven of the divine nine um, sororities and fraternities, as well as different organizations that students may have been involved in as a student in high school, such as um, in our murals and sports or mock trial or student government, we have lots of different ways for students to get connected at Baylor. Um, so like I said, something for everyone here at Baylor. Traditions, we've been around since um, 1885. So it's been a long, long time. So we have lots of really cool traditions. This tradition here, as you can see, this is fake snow. Until two weeks ago, we really didn't have, or three weeks ago, we didn't really have snow until we got, um, unfortunately, that horrible storm in February. Um, but this is fake snow that happens that we have at our Christmas on Fifth Street when we celebrate Christmas together as a Baylor family. And then we have up here to the um, right upper right hand corner. This is our students just making a paint mural um, for our stepping out, which is two days in the school year where we actually go into the community of Waco and serve. And then this is our Baylor line here, uh, which is really cool experience. No one in Texas offers this And the Baylor line is where students will actually get to run the field their freshman year. And they form this cool human tunnel that the football players go in between and then they run up and they sit right behind the visitors bench. Athletics are really important for us here at Baylor. We are a division one big 12 athletics. Um, our male and our female men's and women's basketball team, they both are big 12 championship champions this year, which is really, really cool. Um, and what's also great about Baylor is that all sports games are free, um, included in tuition and fees. You just go and you swipe your ID and go right in, which is really awesome. And then homecoming, we're actually in the Smithsonian for the first official homecoming tradition. So it's encouraged to um, check out our homecoming. Real quick right here, these are our steps to becoming a Baylor Bear. So we are on our go, we do have a free application. We have our own application, our website, Common App Apply Texas. We are test optional for 2022. And we do, if you wanna submit test scores, you're welcome to do that. And we do require transcripts and an essay. And then as you can see here, these are our recommended items. That's really encouraged for you to submit as a way to enhance your application. And then last slide real quick. These are our important days, our November 2nd, which is gonna actually be November 1st, this coming up year and our February 1st decisions. And then, sorry, I uh, this is actually my last slide. Feel free to take a picture of this. Uh, every student has a admissions counselor associated with, associated with their area and you can find them at baylor.edu slash me and more information about us here and I can link more information in the chat. But thank y'all so much. Excellent, thank you so much. We have just wrapped up with all of our presenters, but we do have just a minute or two left in our session. Um, so I am going to invite um, our presenters to give us just one, um, uh, some advice here. We'll go in the order that we started. Uh, and so about 30, 45 second answer of what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? especially as we have um, quite a few usually sophomores or juniors on these sessions, maybe some seniors also trying to make some decisions, but what advice would you give for that search process? We'll go ahead and we will start with Rice.
All right. Um, I think a piece of advice is, um, I think it's important to think about what is meaningful to you in terms of your classes and in terms of your involvement and how you spend your time. I think students think that getting into college is like a formula and like if I do this many volunteer hours, I'll get in. Uh, but no, I think it's important for you to think about what's meaningful to you, what gives you energy, what excites you, um, and then do that to um, as, as well as you can. Excellent. How about Washita Baptist? So my advice is to go visit the schools that you're interested in. Obviously, if you're looking at 15 to 20 right now and trying to narrow it down, um, you know, you can't go and visit all of those. But once you kind of narrow it down to, to five or so, go visit those schools, see where, you know, where you feel at home. That's going to be what helps you make that college decision. If, if you get on campus and it just doesn't feel right for you, if you don't feel like this is where you could spend the next four years, then obviously you know what you should be looking for. And so go visit the different schools that you're interested in. Thank you for your time. And Mississippi College. I would say when you are going through the college search process to make sure you're do, looking for equal parts education as well as experience because it's going to be an investment in both. Um, not only do you want to get a degree at the end of the day, right, in your field of study, but you also are investing a lot of time, a lot of energy, potentially money um, into the experience you're going to have on campus as well. So making sure that you have equal parts in both investment. And Hendricks College. Yes, what I would encourage you to do is to know yourself. Do more research about who you are, what you like, what you enjoy, what you don't like, and then find the college that fits you. Don't let the college drive you. You drive the college process. And Elon University. My advice would be to really be honest with yourself um, and to kind of be real and try as you can to kind of get away from that ideal of what you think that college is supposed to be and really think about where it is that you're gonna thrive. Um, so if you're somebody who thrives in a smaller classroom environment, uh, but you know you kind of want that division one sports and all of those things, you know, think about a school that maybe has, you know, both of those things or kind of has, you know, just you can make it work, but really, you know, you're going to college so that you can really thrive academically as well. So you wanna make sure that you're not just paying attention to just one piece of that, um, but you're really being real with yourself and not just kind of holding yourself to, other people's standards, but knowing where it is that you're going to be the best version of yourself. All right, and Baylor University. Yes, thank you. I think you should take everyone's advice here. Um, and then just to add on that, something that I wish I knew as a student applicant um, is that get can stay connected with your counselor and stay connected with the emails from schools because you're if you're applying to multiple schools, you're gonna have a lot. So I would have a separate email for your just specifically for applying to colleges. This way you have everything there. Um, because what a lot of my students unfortunately um, do is they miss emails and they miss deadlines and opportunities for scholarships and things like that because they don't check their email. So stay connected with the university that you're really interested in and you know, stay connected with your admissions counselor. Excellent, all great advice. Uh, wrapping up here at the end of our 45 minutes. Students, this concludes our uh, panel presentation. I wanna thank you all for joining us. A um, couple of things is that you will have a quick four question survey as you exit out. If you could answer that for us, it really helps us with future programming. Um, there are two more hours of sessions uh, this evening. So sign up for those uh, universities if interested. And you will be able to find this recording later on at strivescan.com slash Texas. Thanks everyone for joining us this evening. Hope everyone has a wonderful night and we'll see you later. Thanks so much.